set, hut, hut. Welcome to the Dynasty Nerds Fantasy Football Podcast, where we discuss dynasty strategy, rankings, and all things NFL. So get ready to geek out on fantasy football with your host, Rich Dotson. And welcome to the Dynasty Nerds Fantasy Football Podcast. I'm your host, Rich Dotson, here with my fellow nerds, Matt O'Hara. Hey, hey. Garrett Price. How's it going? And Jared Wackerly. What up? Yeah, so we're here. We're remote today uh, because it's a Sunday. The NFL draft had, has just wrapped up, and we feel like it's important to the nerd herd and to all our listeners and subscribers to get this podcast out as soon as possible. Because like us and a lot of you, your mock draft starts, or not your mock draft, your real draft starts Monday, May 2nd. So we want to get this podcast out right away to kind of give you thoughts on our these players, where they landed, where we would draft them. Uh, and we're going to start off with a super flex rookie mock draft our goal uh is to get through 18 picks in this episode and then another 18 picks in a nerd herd episode remember if you want to join get those extra episodes all you gotta do is join the nerd herd use that promo code rookie and you'll get 15 percent off all your memberships and you can check out that bonus podcast get access to all our tools and so much more for the price of a cup of coffee so we're going to do super flex. Uh, you'll see a lot's not going to change between a super flex draft this year and a one QB because just like we've been saying all along, these quarterbacks are subpar and the NFL completely agree with us by passing on them for what seemed like eternity. Uh, a lot of these guys did not go high and that's okay. Cause we kind of knew this class was not a strong quarterback class and NFL let us know exactly that. So we're going to get into a one QB class. A super flex or super flex mock draft. I'll pick first. Matt will pick second. Garrett third, and Jared fourth. We'll get through as many picks as possible. But before we get into all that, I got to tell you about our friends. If you're looking at Jared's shirt, if you're looking at Matt's microphone, you know we love our friends over at Prize Picks. What is Prize Picks? Prize Picks is the number one legal platform to make prop bets on. If it is available in your state, we encourage you to get on there and get some of that prop bet action. You make two to five bets. Uh, they're going to pay out to you up to 10 times your money. Right now, if you use the promo code NERDS, they're going to match your deposit up to $100. So you put $100 in there, you're getting an extra $100 on top of that. But not only that, not only is prize picks going to give you a little rub and pat on the back, we at Dynasty Nerds want to help you out too. For helping support our sponsors, we're going to enter you. If you use it, if you make a pick, a uh, futures bet on prize picks, and you either – It'll be on the Google Sheet, right, Jared? The Google Sheet notes of the podcast, either the YouTube video it's, or the uh, podcast. Yeah, it's a Google form. Yeah, fill out that Google name form, your shirt size, uh, your address, and uh, the email you use with the promo code NERDS and we'll uh, with your name, and we'll get you a free Dynasty Nerd shirt, the most comfortable shirt in the world, and enter you to have your team audited on our audit team YouTube series. So, Get on there, check it out. Prize pick, promo code NERDS, make a futures bet, and we're going to hook you up. All right, so before getting into our super flex rookie uh, mock draft here, we do got to shout out one of our contributors, one of our friends, Alexa Della Rocca, uh, who's currently going through a tough fight right now with uh, cancer. And, you know, she's she's on Twitter. Uh, she's She's been a friend of show for over seven years. Uh, I've known Alexa. I know, Garrett, you've uh, come close with Alexa as well, mm -hmm. uh, who's currently engaged and getting married here soon. So I, I personally, and I know Garrett, you want to as well, give our uh, best wishes, let her know that we are thinking of her at all times. One of my all time favorite nerd herders, Alexa Della Rocca, uh, not a doubt in my mind, just like she did the first time that she's going to kick this cancer's ass. Not a doubt in my mind. Yeah, absolutely. I know everyone you, on Alexa. the show has, a, has an, engaged with her and talked with her and uh, yeah, thoughts and prayers. Absolutely for her, for her family. Uh, I, I know it's a it's a tough time, but if there's anybody that's going to crush it, it it's going to be Alexa. I have, I have no doubt. So we're thinking of you, praying for you, uh, and we appreciate all you've done, uh, both as a fan of Dynasty Nerds and also as a contributor. She's written articles, done some awesome stuff with us, so we really appreciate you. Yep. That, so uh, shout out to Alexa. We're we're thinking of you uh, all the time. You know, in a, in a in a in a good way. So. Let's get into the Superflex rookie mock draft here. Oh, it's again Superflex. So two quarterbacks here. I got the first pick. To me, this is this is a no-brainer. Nothing happened in the NFL draft. Nothing's changed. There's no surprises. It's going to move me off this one pick. And that's going to be Brees Hall, running back of the New York Jets. Uh, one of my favorite prospects to come out over the last couple of years, Brees Hall is just too dynamic of a runner. And this absolutely shatters Michael Carter's dynasty value where we thought he was in a position to be 
that lead running back, but now he's going to be that pass catching third down running back, kind of what he did there in North Carolina. And, and what it really goes to show for Brees Hall is at the end of the year last year, Michael Carter looked really good, put up some really good numbers there. They built the offensive line. They're really young. They bring in Garrett Wilson to go with Elijah Moore. They got Corey Davis there. So this is a really good spot, not only for Zach Wilson, for Brees Hall. Um, I think he'll be the unanimous number one pick here in Superflex drafts. Some people might lean Kenny Pickett here or still grab a quarterback. I think this is a no-brainer here. So I'm taking Brees Hall. We've, we've broken him down. Everything about the, pro, the the prospect screams running back one. I think he's in a really good position here to be a high-end dynasty asset for the next five years at a crucial position. Brees Hall, 1-1, New York Jets running back. Love it, Rich. Um, I'm totally with you there. I think there's really not much of a question, um, even in Superflex, who should go first. So I'm definitely with you there. Um, with with the second pick, I think, is where it starts to get real tricky in the Superflex For drafts. Sure. Um, because obviously, you, have, you only had one quarterback taken in the first round, and, and it was Kenny Pickett. So he's kind of like jumping out at you. And, and obviously, this one's going to depend on if you need a quarterback, I think the pick right here is pretty easy, and you go ahead and pick Kenny Pickett and and you you because the Pittsburgh Steelers are one of these organizations that foster uh, kind of growing growing players not just at the quarterback position because right. it's been a long time since they did that but in general they do a good job of bringing along players. I'm not going to make that pick right now. <laughs> I'm I'm going to pick Garrett Wilson. I just think he's the ten more talented player, uh, and I do love what the Jets are doing right now. So, uh, you know, obviously they used a top ten pick on on Garrett Wilson here for a reason. They want to get him involved. Obviously, there is going to be some fighting for targets with Elijah Moore, another player that we really really like. But out of the two of those guys, I think Garrett Wilson is is probably more talented. So I don't even think there's really a question about that. He's he's more talented. They're both. Uber, uber talented guys, but Garrett Wilson is the most talented there. And Corey Davis's contract, you can they're going to be able to get out from underneath that. Obviously, Denzel Mims is not long for that team. So really, it's going to be those two alphas kind of fighting it out. And I think Garrett Wilson's going to be able to be the top dog there um, within the next couple of years. It's a bummer for Elijah Moore because I do like him. I like his his upside, but I think it's going to be it's going to be uh, capped a little bit now that uh, Garrett yeah. Wilson is there, a slightly more talented wide receiver. So I, I feel pretty good about getting my number two guy, even in super flex. Um, Garrett Wilson is my number two guy. So I feel pretty good about getting him here. Yeah. I think that's a great pick, Matt. Uh, and this is a, this is going back to tape over situation. You know, this was a guy that was your top guy coming in. I think it was all of our top guys coming in uh, to the process. And I know some people didn't love the New York Jets landing spot. Uh, I don't mind it as much as most people. I think they're really building something great there with that offensive line that they've built, all of the weapons. I mean, Brees Hall, we have two Jets going back to back at the top of our <laughs> our, uh, our draft here, which who would have thought that uh, a couple yeah. of years ago. So I think that's a good pick. And th- if anything proved – that you should be taking talent over situation. It's been this offseason. Look at all of the players that have switched teams, all of the quarterbacks that had good receivers that don't have good receivers now, or guys that were in tough situations that are in great situations now. And, you know, just even in the draft, we already had A.J. Brown move, which that changed his situation a ton. Hollywood Brown move, that changed his situation a ton. Like, there's all kinds of things that can happen. So I I think we got to stick as close as we can. I know that there's going to be a little bit of movement, but I think we Mm got to stick as close as we can to our board. And and that's what you did there. So I don't blame you one bit. Not me. I'd bump Kenny Pickett all the way up here to one, two, if it was me. Uh, Really? Yeah, to me, it's just – it's too – it's too stable of a situation in Pittsburgh, like Matt said. Uh, they continually draft receivers to build around him. I mean, look at his receiving core and Chase Claypool, Deontay Johnson. They draft George Pickens. They bring in Calvin Austin. They have uh, Pat Fryermuth. They have Najah Harris. they got to build the offensive line, but he's in such a good position where he's going to get the opportunity um, and long-term mm-hmm. opportunity, too. I mean, and this, again, it's super flex. It's quarterbacks. We thought Kenny Pickens was a pretty safe pick. The NFL told us the same thing for where he went. Uh and quarterbacks are still worth their weight in gold and super, uh, super flex. And as much as I agree with, like, I like Garrett Wilson. I like Kenneth Walker. I like Drake London being top 10. Uh, I like Trey Lamb Birch. I like all those guys where they went. There's only one quarterback in this class that you could draft and feel really actually pretty good about it and him getting that good long-term opportunity. And it's, it's Kenny Pickett. So for me, 
that's a no brainer pick. I know it's not on there, but and I know I put that tweet on Twitter as well, putting my super flex ranks out there, and people were saying, Ooh, Kenny Pickett at one, two. I don't think so. And that's fine. Because if Kenny Pickett's hat, if the problem is if Kenny Pickett turns into Kirk Cousins, like we talked about earlier, then he's the best pick in this draft class easily. If he's a 13, 14 quarterback, somehow makes it a 12 eventually with those weapons. I mean, he's it, this is the pick you have to make. So let me, let me I ask love you Garrett this. Wilson, that's where I would go different. Hold on. Let me ask you this. What if Garrett Wilson turns into Justin Jefferson? Is Kirk Cousins more valuable than Justin Jefferson? I mean, if he turns into Justin Jefferson, which I don't think he will, uh, then I what mean, what if he I think turns into wide receiver that point. Fi- 15? Who would you rather have wide receiver 15 or Kirk Cousins? I'd rather have Kenny Pickett. I'd rather have Kenny Pickett or Kirk Cousins in a server flex league. It's just, it's just, it's a quarterback. They're going to score more points. I can start two of them. It's, a, it's, a, I mean, it's a simple math there. I mean, that's what I'm just bringing it down to. I mean, if he turns, let me put it this way. I mean, how many, how many quarterbacks am I taking in a super flex ahead of Justin Jefferson? Six, maybe around there, six, seven quarterbacks. I'm taking off the board in a super flex startup. I mean, we say to preach on are any of them Kirk right Cousins? Now. No, but no, I, again, I also don't believe sense. Garrett Wilson's going to become. Uh, no, I know. I'm just, Justin I'm Jefferson. just trying to be, I mean, those guys, I'm trying to be contrarian here, man. Yeah, and I know, but I mean, there's a lot of talk about it lately because we've seen a lot of these rookies do that. We saw Jamar Chase make the jump. We saw Justin Jefferson make the, the jump. I just want people to remember, too, like these are outliers, right? These are outlier pl- uh, players. Uh, they, they're they hard to come by. They don't happen very often. I think we're a little bit, a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit oversaturated here with like how many of these young guys we've seen hit. And I love, I love Tr- Garrett Wilson as much as the next guy, but I don't see that sealed. I, I think. I think Drake London and Jamison Williams have a higher chance of becoming that player than Garrett Wilson, mostly because of his situation and everything they have there around him. Um, so it's interesting to see. Again, you're going to have a lot of people like Matt that are going to take Garrett Wilson here. They're going to take Traylon Burks. They're going to take Kenneth Walker. They're going to take the, the other position besides the quarterback. I just want to put it out there. That's who I would have taken that too. Garrett, you're on the clock at three. Which way are you going? I've had a really, really difficult time with this uh, because they're – for, I've had Kenny Pickett anywhere from two all the way down to around four ish. So that's, that's what I'm really struggling with is I don't, and I don't think I'm going to go pick it here, which is weird, but I think I just don't believe in the player Kenny Pickett as much as, as you guys do. Uh, I'm really worried about that offensive line. They had one of the, I, I want to say they were the 27th ranked offensive line last year. They literally haven't done anything to improve it the entire off season. And they PFF was talking about how they would have been even worse had Ben Roethlisberger not gotten the ball out in 2.2 seconds on average. So it was just catch, throw, catch, throw, catch, throw. You know, so it's tough for a rookie to process that quickly. I'm afraid he's going to be taking a ton of hits this year. Uh, so I worry about that a little I don't bit. Think he starts. I don't think he starts this year. Maybe not. Maybe not. It, I, that's why I found the pick a little bit odd because I think he's the most pro ready, the guy to start right away. So to get a bridge quarterback and then take the most ready guy at the same time was odd to me. Um, but I think I'm going to actually go Kenneth Walker here. I think it's going to be an open battle. I mean, Mike Tomlin even said it. Yeah, he might, I mean, he might start. It's just, yeah, maybe he does. I mean, we'll see. We'll he see. The but battle. anyway, I'm who's the pick? I, I think I'm going to take Kenneth Walker here. Uh, I think we're in a situation now in Seattle where uh, they love – to run the football, uh, especially without Russell Wilson mm-hmm. there, they're going to continue to love to run the football. And, you know, similar to what you said about the quarterbacks, if a running back hits as a rookie and by hit, I mean, top 15, uh, I mean, you can get so much for those running backs. And I think he has a good chance to hit as a rookie. I think this also says a lot about Chris Carson's health. I'm not sure that he is going to be able to play anymore. Uh, so really the only person that is there competing for carries is Rashad Penny. And he's played what on average five games a season. Uh, so I'm really not too worried about that situation. Uh, I think, uh, I, I think Kenneth Walker is a good running back. Uh, I don't love him as much as other people do, but the running back situation to get a guy that's going to be able to help you this year is very, very slim pickings. Uh, and there's really only two that you can say confidently. There's two or three more that probably will, but there's really only two that you can say with true confidence right now, and it's Brees Hall and it's Kenneth Walker. So at this point, as much as I love these receivers, as much as I do think Kenny Pickett's a fine quarterback and worthy of a top two, three, four pick, I think I would. I think Kenneth Walker's a little safer for me, so I'm going to take him. 
And and Garrett, I same thing uh, I think applies here that applied with what I said at, at number two. If you have a need at quarterback, you're probably going to end up taking Kenny Pickett here. Yeah, I'm and fine with that. I don't think it's I a feel, bad. Pick. I feel I feel fine with. I feel fine with it at two. I feel fine with it at three. I do have him ranked four right now in Superflex as well. That's right. So I'm with you there. I would I would probably pass on him and, and go a different direction as well here. Who do you have at three, Matt? Um, I have Jameson Williams at three. So Okay, just want to check. Garrett, uh, Jared, so you're in the clock at four here. Where are you going? Yeah, so I actually agree with Rich. I, I have Kenny Pickett at 102, so I'm going to go ahead and take him here at 104. I mean – We've hit on it plenty already, why we like Kenny Pickett, uh, that you can't find a better landing spot. I think we said it pre-draft. If one of these quarterbacks goes in the first round of the Steelers, they immediately become all the way up, possibly 102, 103. So we knew Brees Hall was going to be that 101. You have to take the value of the first-round quarterback, the only first-round quarterback in this draft class. I I think he's ready to come in and compete right away. I thought he was the most pro-ready quarterback in the draft class. So landing in Pittsburgh – solid foundation, great organization. Coach is going to be there. You know he's going to be there. Rich went over the rep, the weapons that that he's going to have. Yeah, they got to clean up the offensive line, but I think they'll they'll be able to do that. Um, so I, I love the value of getting Kenny Pickett at 104. I would have taken him at 102, so that's my pick. There you go. Can't blame you there. And I think we've discussed him enough. That, yeah, I think we discussed him enough here. So I'm in, I'm in the clock here at five, and I think this is where it becomes pretty open here. Uh, to eye candy, right? Like, who do you like here in your draft? Because this is where it's becoming a personal decision. I, to me, I don't think there's any clear decision here at all between Jamison Williams, Drake Same London, tier. yeah, Traylon Burks, Sky Moore. Uh, like, who do you, Chris Alave? Like, who's your guy here? You know what I mean? So, I think that if I'm being honest, uh, if I had the same pick in multiple drafts, I would probably honestly go just a different way every single time to get a piece of that pie. There's no player that I would stand on a milk crate for or soapbox to the pile sure. on the chest for. And you got Drake London. It's a lot of metaphors. Uh, who is you know the eighth overall pick in the draft. And he goes to Atlanta, and he's going to be the number one receiver op- opposite side of Kyle Pitts. They have nobody else there at all. Right. Uh, I mean, they're bringing Auden Tate. He takes Auden Tate's place. Uh Olamide Zacharias, you know, like he he's no good here. So he's the number one guy there. I don't like the the short term quarterback solution, but they do bring in Desmond Ritter, who I thought saw a very solid bump by going here to Atlanta. Then you got Traylon Burks, who they literally traded AJ Brown for. So I mean, they didn't want to pay AJ Brown twenty five million dollars a year. They offered him sixteen, and they just figured off the tape, like we could make this trade and just get Traylon Burks and get the same kind of production. Which honestly. I mean, we all love AJ Brown, but when it comes from a production standpoint, and like as in like he hasn't broken the stat line yet. Like so, for him to match his production, I don't think it would be anything outrageous. Uh, you get who, who's my other option here? That I said between the guys, Jameson Williams, Williams, Sky Williams, Williams, Drake London, and then yeah, and then uh, you know, you know, Jameson Williams. It, it's it's one of the most dynamic athletes in his draft, going to play inside a dome. Opposite of Amon Rossi Brown, opposite of DeAndre Swift and uh, Jamal Williams, they they have T.J. Hawkinson. The quarterback situation here is, is a big question mark. That's not a big strong suit for Jared Goff, which is throwing a football downfield. Sky Moore's in the best position possible, uh, a very solid player, uh, a good route runner. But to me, I'm just going to go. I think for this mock draft for today, and my first draft, I would take I would take Jamison Williams for the Detroit Lion, who is obviously the fourth receiver off the board. But again, I I like the fact that he's got a good core around him and that he's just not the main focal point, right? Where they have Amante Brown, they have a good running back, they have TJ Hawkinson, where Drake London, you could probably uh, easily put the best cornerback on him, and that's going to hurt his value just a little bit, definitely as a rookie. I think Jamison Williams wants to figure out the quarterback situation as a player that can top off of any defense if they're going to design a lot of short intermediate plays for him to get the ball in his hands, which we'll have to be patient for because he did tear his ACL, so he might not start the season. I think I'm a dynasty prospect, uh, and I'm going to shoot for the ceiling. I'm going to go off my probably original ranks, which, again, these guys are all in the same tier for me. So I'm not, I don't want to make an argument one better than the other because I, I legitimately, for the first time, like these guys at the top all pretty equally. Like The fact that I'm going to pass on Drake, Drake London and Sky Moore and uh, – 
Traylon Burks like makes me like second guess myself every time and which one of these guys is not going to hit and which one is going to hit. So I'm going to take the guy that I, I like this tape just, I think, a little bit more and offers more fantasy football upside. I'm going to take Jamison Williams wide receiver Detroit Lions here at five. I was really hoping you were going to go another way so I could get my number two and number three <laughs> guy off the board. But I <laughs> good pick, Rich. I, I like the Jamison Williams pick right there. Um, I'm going to follow that up with with – the guy you were just talking about, obviously you just talked about eight different wide receivers. So um, there's still a little <laughs> bit of intrigue and mystery there, but um, <laughs> I'm going to go Drake London here. I do love the fact that it, he is the number one option there. He's going to get fed tons of targets. It's going to be him. It's going to be Kyle Pitts for right now that are really going to be the alphas there. And um, they're building a really unique kind of roster, kind of a Tampa Bay esque type of roster where they just have a ton of tall guys. They're eventually going to have to get that quarterback that's going to obviously just be able to throw the ball um, up to them, even when they're covered. And I think that's kind of what they're going to be going for there. So I do like the height uh, advantage that they're going to pose, you know, against the any any defensive backs in the NFL. So it's it's going to be very interesting to see those two guys on the field together. I do love the landing spot, so I'm going to go uh, Drake London here. And he was a guy that was actually a hair below some of these other guys, and I just love the situation that much that that I bumped him up to uh, number five here in my ranks. Dang it. I was really hoping you weren't going to go with him because <laughs> I, I was battling back and forth between him and Jamison Williams too. So that was going to make it a little bit easier for me. Uh, but I, I think that's, I think that's a really good pick. Obviously if I was going to go that route, I think it's a good pick, but uh, it's going to be a really yeah. interesting offense next year too. If Calvin Ridley is able to come back uh, and, and, you know, be that technician that he has been in the past, then you have Drake that can fill that more true alpha, that more true X type body receiver uh so I, I like i like i like the pick for atlanta uh i just the hardest part is going to be how much production are we going to get early because if he balls out early then i have no worries because it's marcus Mariota and and no real help so if he balls out early that's great um but i think there's a chance we might have to be a little bit patient with him as he goes so um this comes to me now. This, this, this is when it gets tough. Yep. It does. It, do, it they've all been tough honestly, dude. After Brees Hall, like <laughs> is 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 102 significantly yeah. better than 108? Like I don't know that it is. That that's right. the weird part about no, this. No, but yeah. you know you want to be in the top you want to be in the top 8 though for sure. I feel like you mm-hmm. want to be in for me in a super flex the way I look at it right now. Like I for sure want a top 10 pick. That's where I feel really good. Top 10. Like all those guys, I feel pretty good about. They having ten, and once I get to eleven, I'm just kind of like, oh, I have some question marks. Yeah, I'm about in the same range yeah. as you. I'm about in the same range. Uh, so let me let me recap ahead. it real quick. Yeah, before you make your pick, Garrett, we got uh, Brees Hall 101 to Rich Matt at 102 took Garrett Wilson 103. Garrett took Kenneth Walker. I took Kenny Pickett at 104. Rich took 105. Jamison Williams. Matt took 106. Drake London. Garrett, you're up. Yeah, so the next guy on the board for me, uh, and this was a player that I liked uh, quite a bit coming into the process. He fell slightly further in the draft than I expected him to, but then he landed in arguably the best possible situation. So I, I kept him basically in the exact same spot when it was all said and done. So that's Sky Moore for me. Uh, I have him here at wide receiver four uh, in, in this class as far as my rankings go. And it's it's easy to see why this is a good pick. And the the bummer about this is like had he fallen and then gone to like a okay landing spot, like not an amazing one, he was about to be an amazing value at like taking him at like pick 14. And I was gonna be thrilled all day. But now you're gonna have to take him inside <laughs> the top, you know, six, seven, eight picks, uh, because simply because of the landing spot. Even if the people in your draft don't even know anything about him, they'll be like, oh, that's the that's the guy that went to Patrick Mahomes. Okay, I'll take him. Uh no kidding. In my home right. draft, this this would have been three years ago, whatever it was, three, four years ago. In in the class with AJ Brown, DK Metcalf, all those guys, Josh Jacobs, David Montgomery, the 104 that year was Miko Hardman, just simply because he was with Pat Mahomes. So that's the bummer about this pick is like you're still going to have to pay a premium because of where he went. But I still believe in the player. I still believe in the talent. They seem very, very excited to have him on their team. 
Uh, and their patience paid off. I thought that they were not going to get him after they passed on him in the first round. Their patience paid off. They got him late in the second. Yeah, just picturing him with with Andy Reid is – I can't wait to see it. I mean, you know how much of an offensive genius Andy Reid is, and Sky Moore is a guy that you can line up on the outside, you can line him up in the slot, you can run him on jet sweeps, you can hand the ball off to him. I mean, he, he played quarterback in high school. He came in as a DB – He's transitioned positions a couple times and done it very well. So super good athlete. It's great crazy. Hands. Yeah. Great route runner. Great off the line of scrimmage. The yeah, man. I, I don't I have no problem taking Sky Moore there. I'm up at, at 108 and I'm gonna take Traylon Burks from uh, he went to Tennessee, who traded AJ Brown to Philly. So that spot immediately opens up for Traylon Burks to fill. And you know that's exactly what they were thinking. They didn't want to pay. $25 million to A.J. Brown a year to A.J. Brown, and they're just going to bring in a rookie to just replace him, a guy that a lot of people comped him to A.J. Brown. So um, I think Ryan Tannehill is a very solid quarterback. I think there's not going to be any issues feeding him the ball. Um, you know you're going to compete for targets there with Robert Woods, but I, I love taking Trey Lombergs here at 108. I have him ranked as my 106, so I would have taken him a little earlier. But, uh, Garrett, I got no problem with you going Sky Moore there either. Yeah, Beauty's going to be an eye of a beholder a lot of these rookie drafts this year, man. Like, a lot of these guys are going to, like, look for that opportunity. We didn't get the Green Bay bump that we loved to get in the first, but the fact that they traded up so far to get Christian Watson, he might as well have been a first-round pick. So that should kind of give him a little bit of that bump too. But Sky Moore obviously gets the biggest bump as he's the lone uh, player that you would probably, like, long-term love in Kansas City, be with Pat Mahomes. And I don't think anybody could tell anybody they're wrong at any point yet. You know what I mean? I think, it, like you said, from 1 2 to 1 10, like I'm okay with just about anybody that yeah. you take that you have because they're all, they all offer pretty close to the same upside. I mean, if you're looking for straight, I mean, we got face to facts. Like, tri, you know, Drake London offers the upside of being the number one. Christian Watson has the most upside for being almost a lone fancy football factor there besides Sammy Watkins and Robert Tunyon. They're in Green Bay. So if we're talking upside, Christian Watson is that guy. Sky Moore, you know, they, they bring in uh, Juju Smith-Schuster, but he's just okay. Travis Kelsey is on the back end of the 18th hole, not even the back nine. He's at the 18th hole <laughs> putting. You know what I mean? Like, that's it for him. So, yeah, I mean, like and I said, I mean, and I put you in a position to get Traylon Burks there at 1-8, and Traylon Burks is going to go 1-3 in some drafts. He's going to go 1-4 yeah. in some drafts because he's going to take over that Traylon uh, – that role when they traded away AJ Brown, Matt and I were together uh, watching a draft, and we were really taken aback by. It. And I was like, "Wow, yeah. maybe they trade him away and draft a receiver here, and they're just like as a clean swap to pay the salary." And sure enough, it was Traylon Burks. So that's, I mean, that's what screams so much value for him to here because they literally, again, I go back to what I said before. They traded AJ Brown, figuring we'll just give all those same targets to Traylon Burks. That's exactly what they thought. I don't, I don't think it's long term thinking about Robert Woods. It was Traylon Burks. No, it, it definitely is. That that was their thought process, at least the way I see it. But I just want to caution people. I don't think they're exactly the same athlete. They measure the same. Um, they are roughly the same six foot two, two 225 pound body, but I think they're put together quite differently. I think they move quite differently as well. Um, so just caution yourself. I mean, it is a low volume offense. He was, AJ Brown is a very explosive guy. I know that Traylon Burks, has some good build-up speed and can do some things in the open field as well. So there are some similarities, but I think AJ Brown, what he does better, um, is run routes and and is just more yep, explosive right, laterally right. and stuff like that. So there, I don't think it's going to be as seamless as people think the transition between Traylon Burks and AJ Brown. Um, so there is going to be a little bit of that Robert Woods effect, I think, more so than there would have been if AJ Brown was still there. So I, I think I think Robert Woods is going to kind of step step a little bit more to the forefront here, which I think presents really great value value for people who have Robert Woods or are trying to re- acquire Robert Woods because everyone's going to be drooling over Traylon Burks when in actuality it might be Robert Woods that kind of, especially for this year, um, takes the front seat uh, um, for the fantasy value anyway. Yeah, Woods is still coming off the torn ACL too. Uh, yeah, Woods going to the torn ACL mm-hmm. late in the season. I think – I think Mike Vrabel is a smart enough coach to utilize Traylon Burks to his strengths, which is I think they're going to start him off with a lot of what he did in college, which is keeping things short to line the scrimmage here. Bubble screens, him with Derrick Henry to kind of get that opened up for him. So I think Traylon Burks is in position to be one of the most uh, highly productive fantasy assets uh, going into year one. 
Uh, him and Drake London, probably the, and Christian Watson, offer that upside there for year one. Uh, I think it's pretty easy to see why Garrett Wilson could be handcuffed slightly when it comes to fantasy football production with this, not everybody around him, but the quarterback situation as well. Um, so I think Traylon Burks is a really good position to boost his value immediately. So the fact that you have him here at one eight and you get him at one eight, even if you didn't love Traylon Burks, I think he puts you in a position to elevate yourself in a 23 class. So there's nobody here you, you love. I think I think it's the thing too. Like if there's somebody here you love, you don't think any of these guys are long-term solutions, you're, you might be better off taking a guy like Trey Burks, Drake London, or maybe even a Christian Watson. Something to give you a, a bigger return by mid to late season after this year as well. So uh, I'm on a clock here at one nine. I still feel good about these players because I said I like I have a top 10 pick. I'm really torn here between Chris Olave and the player I'm going to take. Uh, I, I currently have Olave ranked one position higher in my super flex ranks. And that's going to show you how much I'm a teeter totter on these two, but I'm going to take uh, the running back that was underutilized at Florida. And that's Damian <sighs> Pierce uh, here at one nine. I mean, we talked about what running backs to end up in Houston and after hall and Kenneth Walker went to two teams that I didn't really think would take a running back uh, right there that early. Damian Pierce goes to Houston in the third round. So yeah, he gets a draft capital that we love for a running back, which is top three rounds. Uh, a situation where he's literally got no competition, a guy who was underutilized at Florida, who does everything pretty good, right? Like he block, he, he pass protects pretty well, good contact balance. He can catch the football out of the backfield, really good in between the tackles, uh, four, five, six speed, but that's not a big deal to me at running back. The, the big thing here is he's going to get a ton of carries. It's him, Davis Mills and Brandon cooks. And, uh, that's that Nico Collins, you know what I mean? Like in Brevin Jordan. So they're going to run the ball a lot. Definitely protect their rookie quarterback and Davis Mills. I know it's his second year, but he, he's a long-term project. So I think Damian Pierce is going to give you immediate production, which means if he's going to be the three down back, which I expect him to be to get a majority of those carries, all he has to do is stay healthy. If he stays healthy, he's a top 15 fantasy football running back because he's going to get more touches than a common running back in football today, which is going to elevate his fantasy stock. And maybe he is one, but it depends how the year goes, right? But say he finishes at running back 15, and I see enough of him where like, all right, this guy is like, this is where he is, a running back 15, running back low end, running back one. I can easily flip this pick at 1-9 and probably get a mid-range 23 first. Uh, if not more down the road or a player I love. So I think he's just in a really good opportunity. I've liked a player. He's been my running back four. Uh, him and Zamir White were my running back four, five, kind of like right in that model there, right behind Isaiah Spiller. But I would easily take James Cook and Damian Pierce ahead of uh, Isaiah Spiller right now. I know James Cook with that second – uh, round draft pedigree. A lot of people will probably take him ahead of Darian, Damian Pierce, but I'm going to take a guy who I, I view as a three down running back, and that's Pierce, now a member of the Houston Texans. I love getting good value at running back late in the draft. Here at 1 9, I think this is incredible value. So, for the record, you said uh, you love the, the the first three round pedigree. He was a fourth round draft pick for 4 2, but that, that brings up something I wanted to kind of discuss. He was 4 2. Yeah, you're right. My bad. I, I, this year was really weird, especially for running backs. A lot of them got bumped down quite a bit because there were so many wide receivers that got taken. I feel I felt like they kind of like naturally trickled down, and there were so many kind of other there was gluts at other positions that kind of forced some guys down that maybe the NFL doesn't value as high, which is, you know historically has been like the running back. So I feel like there was maybe like a half round bump down for every one of these guys than than they would normally have been taken in every any given round. At least that's the way I saw it. Do you guys feel similar to that um, when you kind of look at the landscape of, of the running backs and where they got taken this year? Yeah, absolutely. I think part of that too is when you don't have a running back go in the first round, then everything does kind of scale back. Like, okay, he's roughly like 30 picks behind – Kenneth Walker. So, you know, like I, and I don't, right. obviously they didn't work out exactly like that. And I don't think they said those exact things, but I think everything does kind of get pushed back when the first guy goes at, what was it? 36 versus going at 26. So I, I think that that right. played into it as well, but this is similar to what Jared and I were talking about when we were doing the nerd score. We're like, there's a lot of late third, early fourth round running backs in this class. And that's roughly how it panned out. We saw, a decent little run there at the end of the third. And we saw a big run in the fourth round of a lot of these running backs. That's where most of them went within this, like, you know, 
45 pick span, it seemed like, where there was just a ton of them that right. went. So, uh, but all of that to be said, I like Pierce here. Uh, he moved up from, he was one of the biggest risers for me. He moved up from my RB7, I believe, up to RB4. So I have no problem taking him here. There's a couple other guys that I like, but I, I think this is a totally fine spot for him. I do wonder if Marlon Mack will play a role, won't play a role. We'll have to see how all that plays out, but I'm a fan of Pierce here. Matt, you are on the clock at 110. Okay. So at 110, I am going to go ahead and go back into that first round wide receiver pool. I'm going to take Jahan Dots in here. I know you guys really Ooh. haven't even mentioned him so far. I think maybe maybe it's landing spot or whatnot, but um, he he's went to not the, far away the from me. Commanders so and I get you. With the 16th pick. Um, and when you dig in a little bit, I mean, Scary Terry's on the last year of his deal. These wide receiver contracts are crazy insane right now. And they might have just done exactly what the Tennessee Titans did without trading away their pick, without trading away their wide receiver already. You know what I mean? They might have gone and kind of replaced Scary Terry with Jahan Dotson just kind of a year early. Um, so John Dotson might very well be the man uh, to come this time next year on the Washington Commanders, just depending on how much money Scary Terry um, actually demands. So um, love this, love the player, uh, love the long term uh, landing spot for the Commanders. Obviously, this year he's going to have to share share some time and kind of. Um, uh, uh, you know, he's going to be splitting times with, with, with Terry McLaurin, but uh, I think the long-term future might be dots in there with, with the commander. So at 10, I feel great about getting him. Yeah. They're probably going to slide him right into the slot. They had uh what's his face in the slot last year. They didn't want to sign him. They still have Curtis, Curtis. Samuel in their contract. Yeah. And uh, they're going to move Curtis Samuel to the outside uh, mm-hmm. is where he plays. So he didn't play in the slot last year. It was uh what's his face that guy, ah, who was it played there? I can't remember his name. They played in the slot last year. They didn't resign him. They're gonna move. They're gonna keep Curtis Samuel on the outside. So they're gonna move Jahan Dotson to the inside. Terry McLaurin's the number one. He'll get the long term deal there. Uh, I mean, I don't so think Dotson, kinda, I don't think Dotson is is just pigeonholed as a slot guy. He's a, he's he's a guy that did both at Penn State. I think he could do both in the NFL as well. I think he can, but I think he's gonna play the slot for Washington at least to start. Um, it's it, it, it's it's one of those spots too that I just didn't overly love. Like I love the draft pedigree in the first. We know they're looking for another receiver. Obviously, it ships the end once a, once a Curtis Samuel's money's gone. He's going to be out there, too. So who, who will be the number two? But it's going to be him and Terry McLaurin. And we still don't know that long-term quarterback situation. So that's it's. I like Dotson. I didn't love the landing spot, I guess. And Matt, I'm not far away from you. Um, I have him just, just right around that 12 pick uh, overall in the first round. So I think you just took him at 10. So well, I don't think we're too far apart there. Uh, and and I think it comes down to, I know you and I had him as our wide receiver four overall. So how far are we going right. to bump him down on a perceived bad landing spot? Uh, and like we said before, if anything we've learned this year, it, it, the NFL changes rapidly. I mean, there's a chance that, that Terry McLaurin could still even be traded this year. I don't think it happens, but I mean that there, there's still absolutely a chance uh, with how these contracts are going for uh, these guys. So uh, it wouldn't shock me in the least. So uh, that puts me back on the clock. And hold on, ju- hold on. Just for the record, um, Washington sure. only has about ten million dollars in cap space right now. So okay. that just to give you uh, kind of where they're sitting, they're twenty first in the league. Um, so go ahead. No, it's good to know. Um, yeah. All right, so we finally have the NFL draft. We finally have the landing spots for all of these guys, and you know we're the best place to uh, make a little money knowing where all these guys went is predictionstrike.com. Yes, that's right. Capitalize on the guys that you really like that maybe fell a little further than other people would like or maybe the no-name guy in the fifth round that landed in a great spot that you want to elevate Go get some shares of those guys. That's what you can do on predictionstrike.com. You can buy, sell shares of players just like you would the stock market. Best of all, with Dynasty Nerds, we got a promo code for you. Promo code DYNASTY. You know what that gets you? An absolutely free share of a player. That's right. Promo code DYNASTY gets you a free share at predictionstrike.com. Go there today. All right. I'm tempted. I'm tempted to take Desmond Ritter. I'm not going to take Desmond Ritter because there's one guy ahead, and I get it. Third round uh, draft capital isn't sexy, but we've had a lot of these guys go in the second, third round lately that a year or two later, 
we wish we would have gotten a lot sooner in our drafts. Davis Mills last year, Jalen Hurts two years ago. We've seen a lot of these guys. I think Desmond Ritter could end up being a very good quarterback. I've liked him throughout the process. Jared's hated him. He's always been a hater. So when he's great, you guys can all rub it in his face. But with that being said, there's one Never guy that hated I th- him. you've always hated him. Always. Uh, I just think he's inaccurate, but I like his intangibles. See? Hater. Yeah, see, you didn't say anything nice just now. That was just your chance to prove it, and you messed up. All right, so the guy that I would take here, though, is Chris Olave. Uh, Chris Olave is kind of the forgotten guy, I feel like, of a lot of these receivers, but he was the third quarterback off the board, and we're talking about teams that don't have much. We have the ghost. (laughs) What's that? said the third quarterback. He's the third receiver. Third receiver, sorry. Yeah. Thank you for interrupting me again, Jared. Uh, the third receiver off the board uh, to New Orleans. And all that they have there so far is the ghost of Michael Thomas. That's the only player that they have right now. So I'm not even sure. Like He's under contract he... for like six more years. <laughs> he is. Just yeah, if, if he wants to play. I don't even know that he wants to play. Like yeah. I have no idea what's going on with him. But either way, let's not forget what Jameis Winston meant to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for a few years ago. He was that guy that got Chris Godwin, Mike Evans, these thousand yard receivers, wide receiver one seasons. He was amazing for them. Chris Olave really could end up being the top receiver for this team. And even if not, as wide receiver two with that type of potential passing volume, He could be excellent, great route runner. We know that he's super fast. We know he's not going to break any tackles, but still, he can make some big plays, he can make some big catches, and he's going to get open. So at this point, I'm not sure that there's a huge difference between Chris Olave and Drake London or Jameson. Like I don't know that there's a huge difference between these guys. And the NFL valued him as the third guy off the board. So I'm I'm really happy to get him here at 111. I think – this is probably close to where he's going to go to. I don't think people love Chris Olave, and I think I think he's going to end up being a good value. And the Saints trade up a lot to get him. Yeah, like yeah. they moved, like they moved up a lot to get. They gave up like a. I can't remember Matt. Me and I, you were looking at the time. I can't remember. But they were like, "Wow, that has to be for a quarterback." For they gave up, right? They yeah, gave up like a third did. and fourth yep. round pick uh, to move up for him. So they really wanted him. And again, Jamison Williams was on the board, and they still traded up that high for Chris Olave. Uh, so it went 10, 11, 12, their receiver. So I think that puts in like, he's a major part of their future yeah. and their plans. And Jameis Winston was having one of his best years last year, started the year before he got hurt. Like he looked really good with, uh, the saints. So I look for that to continue. I think this is, I think this is really good value in, in a draft class where we thought was pretty weak. And I think it's going to show you here that the first round, you're going to come away with somebody that you feel good about. Cause yeah. even get here, if you get a lobby here at 11, or where do you get him? Yeah, here? 11. This is 11, right? 11, yep. yep. Yeah. And even who's on the board still here for 12 and 13, I think I think you come away really happy with a guy like Chris Olave for a team that trade up who's got top 10, 11 draft capital. Uh, the number one receiver they're going to get out from under the moment, the minute they can get out from under that contract, they're going to get out from under him. Their long-term running backs in question. There's nobody there. They, they bring back Traquan Smith. You know, there's a lot of opportunity for him just to be peppered with targets. And one thing that we know Lave will do is get separation and catch the football because yep. those are all things that he does really well. Uh, so he might not score a lot of touchdowns. His large enough to catch him might not be really good, but he's going to be what we said he was, which is a mid range wide receiver two to a wide receiver three year in and year out. Uh, nobody, you know, I think four years from now. Uh, Alave is not going to be very like loved. I can easily see him be one of those players that becomes that, you Robert know, constantly Woods. getting traded in your dynasty league because, yeah, you know what I mean? Like that Robert Woods, he finishes anywhere from wide receiver 14, 18 every year, but like, nobody, nobody loves him because they know he's not an elite receiver, but he gives you good production. So I think a very good value pick here at 111. Garrett, Jared, who are you taking at 112? 112, I'm, I'm super excited to grab another receiver. It's crazy how deep this receiver class is, is with such a – shallow running back class at the top. You know, we've only had two running backs go, and then we only have one quarterback go in a super flex draft, and we're still excited to take these receivers. So I'm taking Christian Watson here, Good Green Bay Packers, um, pairing up with one of the best guys to ever sling the football on Aaron Rodgers. Um, deep threat, 4-3 speed at 6-4, 210 pounds. Uh, I think he pairs up perfectly 
with Aaron Rodgers, who can, who can deliver the ball, hit him in his chest, down the field. Uh, Christian Watson's going to get open. The only real concern I had with Watson was some drop issues. But other than that, I, I loved him. I thought he was going to be a first-round pick. He went at 34 overall, so just outside. Still has a second-round draft capital. So very excited with being able to get Christian Watson at the back of the first round. Another another player the Green Bay Packers traded up for. They yep. moved up a lot to get Christian Watson. It seemed like an easy pick. They they were getting all the flack for not taking a receiver here in the first. They had two first round picks, did not use him on a receiver. But they make up for and get a first round potential receiver in Christian Watson, who who like Jared said, this guy offers a ton of year one upside. Uh, getting him at one twelve, you you have an opportunity to get the number one fantasy producer. What's great about Watson is you're getting him here at the back end of the receivers to a team that's already competitive that offers you the most year one fantasy potential. So, like, what a huge asset to your dynasty team if you get him at the back end of the first. He could be the piece that you're missing to get you over that edge. A guy that you're bringing in, you already have a good enough team to make the playoffs and already a good enough team to compete. Now you're bringing somebody in who's potentially your wide receiver four on your team, maybe wide receiver three. They can give you those high-end wide receiver two numbers. If you get any – we saw about Devontae Adams, he scores touchdowns. And Rodgers is going to put you in position definitely deep to score those touchdowns. If his, double, if his touchdowns are above seven, he's going to give you some really good fancy football production. And this could be a weapon that could put you over the edge year one. Look for this as to be a player that probably gets the biggest boost after this year. I mentioned a guy like Damian Pierce. Christian Watson easily falls in this category. He can go as high as one six, really, with his landing spot. Uh, no argument here. You can put him in that tier of those guys that you can take really, really high. I love this pick. I love the value. What a high upside fantasy football receiver. And it's crazy that Green Bay, the Green Bay receiver that we looked at for the Green Bay bump and a player that we thought had an athletic profile for fantasy football still falls to 112 here. Like what a, what a great value. Absolutely. So I'm going to clock here to start the second round here at 2-1. Let me, let me recap the first round real quick before moving to the second round. Uh, 101, we had Rich go Brees. Then we had Garrett Wilson, Kenneth Walker, Kenny Pickett, Jamison Williams, Drake London, Sky Moore. Then at 108, we had Traylon Burks. 109, Damian Pierce. Then Jahan Dotson and Chris Olave. And then Christian Watson to round off the end of the first round. And that's, a, that's a pretty solid. Yeah, it's a pretty solid first round right there. Yeah, those are all the... Uh... That's a good tier, right? <laughs> it's a good tier, that first round tier. Because I do feel, I mean, there's a couple other guys. There's like another guy here or two that I might be okay sliding the first. Obviously, like James Cook screams really good value in the second round draft pedigree and his pass catching ability there in Buffalo, even though Buffalo throws the ball the least amount uh, to the running backs. But I'm taking Desmond Ritter here at 2 1. Good pick. I know it's a third round draft pick, which isn't great. Um, and we don't see a lot of those guys a la Russell Wilson's produce and succeed but at 2-1 I mean over the running back I have the 1-1 here for a reason I could take a receiver here to offer some upside but I have to look for that value I gotta look for the best return for my team and I'm gonna take a quarterback that's got good mobility that get done with his legs that has a good enough arm that is in a, a much better position with a clearer path to start for their team with the Atlanta Falcons with Desmond Ritter I mean I don't think Marcus Mario is any good. I think he's good at scrambling the football. I don't think he's good at throwing the football whatsoever. I think we'll see Desmond Ritter before the year's up at this year. I think he fall himself into a Davis Mills situation where he's the uh, starter going into next year, unless they really – the problem with these quarterbacks now is if these teams end up being really bad, none of these guys with their draft capital are preventing them from drafting the C.J. Stroud, the Bryce Youngs, right? And right. that's the biggest we're here with Atlanta is, like, they're probably still going to be really bad. Yeah. So unless Ritter does get an opportunity, like, I need Mario to be bad enough where Ritter comes in and then he's good enough to make them hold off on not taking that quarterback. But then the problem is if they're, if they're a top three pick, those quarterbacks are too good to pass up. Right. So it, it's you got to win, like, six it's a games. Risky pick here. Get six wins. It is, man, and it's it's a risky pick going over guys like James Cook, like I mentioned, Trey McBride in the Super Flex, George Pickens, Rashad White. I mean, these are guys that I like. But being at the bottom makes me feel like I'm a little bit more riskier and a pickier, you know? So here we go, and I'm taking Desmond Ritter. I'm taking the quarterback. I love quarterbacks in Super Flex. I love youth. I love the opportunity for them to get an opportunity so I'm going to shoot for the moon here and get risky with it. And I'm taking Desmond Ritter because I don't I don't think he'll be here when I get back. And I doubt Malik Willis will be as well. 
So if there's a running back that I like between or a receiver I like, I think there'll be at least enough value there at 3-1 for me to go ahead and grab the quarterback error at 2-1. I like it. All right. Um, that is uh, probably a little bit more risk than I'd be willing to take this high, but I understand it. I completely understand it because if he hits, it's it's huge. Um, but like you laid out, I think there is a probably a pretty good chance that – he stinks and gets on the field and and but isn't you know or the team stinks he gets he gets on the field and then he isn't quite good enough for them not to draft a replacement early in the first so that's kind of how i think that yeah, one's going to play fair. out um so i should move him down my rankings probably a little bit now the more i think about it, i was just it's like i like the player an opportunity but i mean there's such a high chance that the team's bad enough where they're going to draft a quarterback high next year and i got to think ahead in that aspect too i just can't assume the next guy is going to be davis mills you really cannot. Um, so with that said, I'm going to go ahead and and take a wide receiver that got drafted in the second round to yes. a really nice landing spot. Um, I'm going to take George Pickens here. Um, I should have taken George Pickens. I've done messed up, Mama. Don't should, tell my friends. You should have, I, but I am. So, you know, obviously the Pickens uh, – Pickens do he's landing in a great spot there they do a great job of cultivating wide receivers they do all they also do a great job of just cycling them in and once these guys want to get paid they already have their replacement kind of in line so Pickens obviously isn't the same type of wide receiver as Deontay Johnson but Deontay Johnson is operating on the last year of his deal all this is getting crazy now um as far as how much they're having to pay wide receivers so I think this is this Pittsburgh Steelers just being proactive. This pick, along with the Calvin Austin, the third pick later on in the draft, I think both those guys are just going to be they're going to be seamlessly kind of transitioning into starting lineups as Deontay Johnson and kind of Chase Claypool transition out of their first contract and probably off the team. So I, I do see both those guys as kind of the starters of the future for Pittsburgh. And um, I feel really good about getting George Pickens, a guy that I see as immense like wide receiver one upside here in the top of the second round. All right, Matt, pass over the conductor hat. <clears throat> <laughs> Matt, you were higher than most of us, right? On Pickens, I think. I was, yeah. I think I had him. I think I had him yeah, at number seven really high overall. Too. Yeah. Okay. So he's a little too more like boom or bust for me. I'd take a few running backs before I take Pickens here, but – uh, Pickens would be the next receiver I would take. So I, I got no issue with you taking them there. But by the way, I know who who is going to be taken here, and that was the next guy on my board, and I would like to take him as well. Nope, but too late. It's too you. late. Get, get the conductor. Get the conductor hat on. <laughs> choo, choo. <laughs> all right. Go ahead, I'm Gary. taking Go Zemir White. Make your pick. Quit, quit, I'm taking Zemir White. He's the man. He's the greatest running back of all time. <laughs> Uh, no, so <laughs> you're back on top. <laughs> uh, originally, you know, at first glance, you're like, ew, Las Vegas, they have Josh Jacobs. I don't like that. And that was what I, that's what I felt at first. The first like 10 seconds when I first saw that, that's what I felt. But then I remembered a tweet that I saw from the Oakland or, or Oakland, Las Vegas Raiders the day before <laughs> that said that they are not extending anybody from that class so cleveland farrell uh jonathan uh what is it jonathan abrams or jonathan abrams? jonathan abrams yeah and then josh jacobs they're not giving any of them their fifth year option so i was like well we have a brand new coaching staff which anytime that there's a new coaching staff they always like to get their guys so they drafted a running back in the fourth round which we talked about earlier fourth round isn't amazing draft capital but it's not bad either uh, so they, they get their guy in the fourth round. Josh Jacobs is going to be gone next year and it'll be interesting to see how much run he gets early. I still think Josh Jacobs is going to be the guy for this year, but I do think we'll see Zamir cut in a little bit more and a little bit more as the year goes on. Cause they're going to want to groom him to be the between the tackles guy for the, the Raiders. Now, I don't know what they're going to do as far as receiving. I, with McDaniels, if, He's taking the similar offense that they've had in, in New England uh, to to Las Vegas. There probably will be a receiving back at some point, but we know that the the main running back, assuming it's one guy, always gets a ton of production, ton of runs, specifically inside the red zone. So I think this is a great spot to get Zamir early in the second round. 
especially because there's a, a high ceiling in year two. Maybe not year one, but there's a high ceiling in year two. Well, Garrett, I absolutely love that pick. I, I uh, agree with all, all everything you said here. Um, obviously, Kenyon Drake is in the last year of his deal as well. Sure. Um, they do have Brandon uh, Brandon Bolden that they brought over from um, the Patriots. And he's on, I think, a two-year deal, but they could probably get out from underneath that as well next year. So there sure. really is um, – not left a lot left in that room after this this year. So Zamir here in the fourth round, I think, offers a lot of upside. Love the guy. I don't, they picked another guy that went to UCL UCLA in like the seventh round as well. I don't know. Yeah, Britton uh, Brown, I think. Britton Brown, Brown yeah. maybe he's. I, I literally know nothing about him. The NFL doesn't even know anything about him. You go on NFL.com. There's no measurables. There's no nothing on this guy. <laughs> he, so, he wasn't even the, the main guy there. It was Charbonnet this past year. So Yeah, they split. He's not bad. He's a good athlete. He used to play at Duke. He transferred to UCLA. Is he a pass-catching type of guy? Could he fill that role long-term, or, or do you know uh, uh He's more of a that bruiser, I think. Okay. All right. So interesting. Um, it, it seems like they don't have anything there long term for that pass catching. Oh, like you said, Garrett. Um, I was just curious um, if anyone knew what this other guy is. So um, no. no, no biggie. I love the pick. Uh, Zamir White is the man. I love him. Yeah, it's like Garrett laid out all the reasons why he has such a clear path in twenty twenty two to be the potential running back one, and that's all you're looking for is a path here. Uh, if you're going to start in the second round here in these high picks, you're looking for that kind of upside. He offers that. I would have taken a couple players ahead of him here, uh, de- even at running back. Uh, but that's just me. Jared, you're on the clock. I'm on the clock at 204, and I'm going to take Isaiah Spiller. Went to the Chargers Ooh. in the fourth round. Um, I had Spiller graded as my RB3 pre draft. I like Spiller. Uh, I know he fell to the fourth round, which is a little lower, lower than uh, like the fantasy football consensus felt but uh, I still like the landing spot I know Austin Eckler's there but they've been trying to find someone else to work alongside Eckler and I think he would be the perfect person in that role Eckler's getting up there in age it's a young offense that's has a ton of weapons it's going to score a lot so I think there's going to be some opportunity for Spiller to score some points there and I'm, will, I'm willing to roll the dice on, on a guy that I, I I did like yeah this is finally one of those um later round running backs quote unquote um that they 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 seem to be picking one every year every every other year there um with the chargers trying trying to fill that role like you were saying and this is isaiah spiller is by far and away the best one that they've picked i mean larry roundtree from a couple like last year that guy's he's just a guy you know and then there's uh kelly uh there as well they just seem to always be yeah jackson they always just seem to be getting guys that are kind of they're just guys isaiah spiller might be the guy that's actually the guy of the future. You know what I mean? Like you, mm-hmm. you mentioned um, Eckler is getting up there in age. I think he's 26. Um, so he's 26, not like super yeah. old, but yeah, right. but he's he, running back two though, years right? from, yeah, two years from now that th- this could be, this very well could be uh, their long-term kind of two year goal is to get Isaiah Spiller kind of eased into this starting role a couple years down the line. So I actually like this pick right here as well. Yep. Next pick on my board. So that means we only have two picks left for this uh-huh. show but then we're going to continue it on to the next show. So uh, Rich, you'll pick, pick six or 17, Matt, you'll do 18. And then uh, you, if you want 19 and beyond, you'll have to go, go to the nerd herd show. All right. So I'm on a clock here to me. I, I, so this is what, where are we at? Two, two, five. Two, five. I love the value I'm getting here. This is, this player is ranked uh, as my number 14th all over player. So he's my running back four. I'm taking James Cook, running back of the Buffalo Bills, you know, coming out of Georgia here. This is somebody I know the situation might not seem ideal, but they're probably going to line him up as in the slot receiver a lot too. He's going to be based as a PPR guy. We saw Devin Singletary end of the year last year as a very solid fantasy football running back. I don't think he's a long-term answer there. I think they start him off as a PPR running back. They invested a second-round pick in him. Uh, at, at, at the running back position. So he was the third running back off the board. So that's enough right here to show that the Bills are invested in this player. They, they, they signed Duke Johnson this offseason, so he's probably not – Duke Johnson's probably not going to make the team this year. So they already had a plan how to utilize that pass catcher running back, probably help Josh Allen out a little bit here. Uh, a lot of short stuff, a lot of stuff in the flats. If anything happens to Devin Singletary, I know Zach Moss there, not a lot's going to happen there. I think he offers the upside – of that mid-range running back two upside in PPR leagues. And 
for a player to play the running back position and get drafted in the second round, definitely just such a good team. If if any of these other running backs would have went to the Bills, we'd be screaming, oh, my God, the Bills got their starter running back. I think the draft pedigree here on a guy like James Cook and what he brings to the table with this pass catch ability, the, the ability to get the outside. I saw him with the ability to run between the tackles, even though it's not his ideal uh, thing that he wants to do there, and they got bigger running backs to do that. I think Devin Singletary, with, in, with his stature, showed us he could be a top 10 running back in this league. Draft pedigree when it comes to running back is absolutely everything. If you're going that high, they they have a plan for you and they're going to utilize you. They already said they're going to work them some at the receiver position. So I love this. I love it a lot. Uh, getting value here above these running backs. I think we're going to see a high run of running backs in the second round of drafts. We'll see how it picks up after my pick as well because there's still a couple of the running backs I'd love to get in my dynasty team. But James Cook right here, top of my list. What a team. Uh, what a quarterback to draw away uh, some at, some of those defenders from him as well. And that PPR upside is too hard to pass up. We see running backs year in and year out, not only finish as top 24 running backs, but there's always one of those guys that sneaks into running back one territory, anywhere from 8 to 12 every single year. I think James Cook offers that kind of upside, so I love that value I get here at 2-5. Yeah, I absolutely, I'm with you there, man. I, I think me and you had him – both right around here pre-draft. Um, I think it was Jared and, yep. and um, Garrett that kind of had him a bit lower. So I'm, I'm actually curious to, to see your guys' thought. Do you guys you guys like the landing spot? or or? I do. I was torn with taking Cook or Spiller there, honestly. Like I could have flipped the coin. Uh, I, I, I have the same thoughts as Rich, as I think he's going to kind of fill in like a slot receiver type role. I know they have to have a plan for him or how to use that type of player. And they're probably thrilled to have James Cook on, on the board there in the second round, a guy that's the best at that as a pass catcher in this entire draft. So I, I like it. I, I would have taken Cook either one of these picks. And okay. I'm I'm not far away from it. He would have been my rich that he was his 14th ranked. I have him like 16th, so I'm not super okay. far behind. Um, I don't I don't know that I'll get him very often. I'm not quite as high on him, the player, um, and I I don't see him being a guy that gets more than 10 carries between the tackles. I would be kind of surprised if if he got more than that uh, on average. Uh, so I'm, I'm a little bit lower on him and Josh Allen basically never checks it down. He's consistently year after year, one of the lowest check down rates out of any quarterback, partly because he runs the football so much. So uh, I, I like the second round pedigree and I like the, the potential opportunity. I just, I think this is actually a great spot for him. I'd feel comfortable taking him here. I just think in other drafts, he might go in the first round and that's where I wouldn't be comfortable taking him. Okay. Singletary is in the yeah. last year of his deal, just as a, an aside. Um, I don't know that Rich mentioned that or not, but um, he could be potentially the guy that it, it could be him and Zach Moss, which um, this time next year, which I think those two guys would offset each other pretty well. Sure. And I know yeah, Josh Allen is Austin Eckler. I was sorry, Rich. I know Josh Allen doesn't check the ball down a ton, but they also haven't had a running back that's dynamic like James Cook. You know, they've had Singletary. Or he's not as much of a mismatch against linebackers as you're going to get with James Cook. So it's not even like checkdowns. I think they're going to be involving him in the pass scheme, in the progression, right. in the route progression, right. where he's actually going to be like that. That's going to be your guy. You see him matched up with an outside linebacker there. Oh, I'm going James Cook all day here because he's going to burn this guy. So um, yeah, I think he's going why they draft him where they draft him. Right. Yeah. He's going to line up in the backfield. Um, and as soon as the play starts there, you know, or they're going to, they're going to motion him out to the outside and he's going to be out, out there against a linebacker and in space where he can really dust him. And that's why I mentioned that that's where like draft pedigree scream. Like it tells you so much more than you need to know mm -hmm. how like he's going to be, it's not like, Oh, I wonder if they use him like this. Or I wonder if they use, no, he was a mid range, like back end of the second round pick. Like he's going to be utilized. Mm -hmm. He's a plan of this off. They're good. Sean McDermott's going to plan him into this offense. And I think we saw a little taste of that when, I said when they brought in Duke Johnson. This is something they're going to open it up to. I think Sean McDermott's a smart enough coach to expand his team every single year and not be this pigeonhole team like we do this, we do this, and this. I think Josh Allen's still grown as a quarterback. A lot of people say he's the outlier. But Josh Allen does realistically still has a lot of things he needs to work on to become a, a more complete quarterback. And I think this is another part of his game that they can open up, and we're going to see it. It, it, him out of the slot, him on the backfield. And like I said, it's not just going to be dump off. It's going to be short, intermediate routes, and he'll be utilized there. And like I said, I'll take 10 carries a game because realistically, 
that's what these kind of guys get. I mean, look at Austin Eckler. Austin Eckler is not valued for his in-between tackles running, sure. but he produces at a high level. So James Cook can get that kind of value, which, again, if this team throws the football as the number one throwing team in the NFL like they have been, I'm okay with that because if he's on the field, he's a part of this offense, definitely with the core they have, and Josh Allen, the way he moves and manipulates that pocket – it just it offers that fancy football upside. He'd be my number three running back off of, of the board here, and I'd actually consider him if I need a running back all the way down to one twelve to two hundred one two. I think he's just he's a really one good value. one three. I thought, so you, Matt, had in, in I thought you had Pierce at one uh, running back three, right? So he'd be your fourth. yeah. He did. Well, yeah. He so did. Pierce is my running back three. James Cook is running back four. Okay. Uh, right now, Matt, you're at uh, right. pick sixteen. You're gonna close off this mock draft. We'll pick up where we left off in the nerd episode. Remember, you can get those nerd episodes by using that promo code Rookie for price of a cup of coffee. You get the bonus episodes and all our tools, which are here to help you draft, continue all season, and dominate your dynasty league. Matt, who are you taking here at one sixteen? Two oh six. I'm gonna take at two oh six. I'm gonna take um, John Mechie. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. Um, I'm gonna take. Yeah, John Mechie, um, obviously I liked him a, little, a lot more than you guys did pre-draft, but he ended a up going early in the second round a lot more. Um, and everyone gave me flack for it, and he got picked in the second round. He got the Bama what bump. Round did Sh- what, what round did uh, Shakir go in? Hey, let's let's uh let's not forget we've had plenty of second <laughs> round busts. <laughs> Just busts. Hey, Kevin <laughs> Austin did get drafted, but he did sign with the Jaguars. <laughs> all right, so, all right. So so John Mechie, I take back everything I said. I love about him. Mechie had a great landing spot, Matt. So John Mechie, he does have a pretty good spot. Um, obviously he's coming off the ACL, so it's going to be a, a bit of a slow start to his career. Um, but. Really, I mean, they have Nico Collins there. They've got Brandon Cooks, who who knows if he's going to be there in another month or so. He's got a very tradable contract, especially the way that guys are getting paid nowadays um, at the wide receiver position. Um, so, you know, obviously at the latest, I would I would imagine next year it's going to be Nico Collins and, and John Mechie as the number one and number two options in this offense. But, you know, it could be as early as the beginning of this season or whenever he's able to get on the field coming off the torn ACL. So I, I do love the fact that, you know, they're, they're building some things there. We, we obviously like the Damian Pierce um, running back uh, uh, draft pick as well. And, and now they're, they're, they also have a nice, nice wide receiver. Obviously, he's probably going to play in the slot. He does – he. He's he, he's a, a guy that can play in the slot slot and out wide, so I don't want to pigeonhole him just as a slot guy, but I could imagine him starting his career there anyway, um, and then kind of progressing. Um, obviously, Nico Collins is the bigger guy, the the more X uh, wide receiver there, sure. but uh, I do like the the pick here and obviously the draft pedigree. That we I, got I do need to say year. this: last year, Terrence Marshall Terrence. was a second round pick, right, guys? And uh, Amon Rob St. Brown was a fourth round pick last year, right? I'm just saying. I'm just, it I'm does just happen. saying. Yep. I'm just saying. It happens year mm-hmm. in and year out. It does. It'll be a Hall of Famer drafted late. You know, just, it happens. But I have to I bust have, your chops I, I have, uh, I have to bust your chops now. We're, I think we're all seasoned no. enough to not victory lap after a draft. No, absolutely not. I'm busting your chops completely. <laughs> yeah, no. I would take somebody else here. <laughs> <laughs> Who would you take? Right. But what a spot! I mean, again, landing spots, everything too. I would take Alec Pierce ahead of him. Um, but yeah, I, mean, I got so, those. I have so those really guys. Good. I have I have those guys pretty close. So yeah, I I literally have uh, John Metch is my wide receiver eleven, and Alec Pierce is my wide receiver ten. But there's a running back I would take here. Uh, ahead of him as well. But who will that player be? Well, I got you mm-hmm. in the nerd mm-hmm. episode to find out because there's still a couple values here that I like. You know, not for sure things, but they scream value. Uh, and also upside, and this is super flex tight end premium. We've only had two quarterbacks go and no tight ends. No tight ends. Where will they go in our mock draft? Let me uh, let me recap. Let me recap the draft. So 101, we had Rich take Brees Hall. 102, we had Garrett Wilson. 103, Kenneth Walker. 104, we had Kenny Pickett. 105, we had Jamison Williams. 106, we had Drake London. 107, we had Sky Moore. Then Traylon Burks, then Damian Pierce, then Jahan Dotson, Chris Olave at 111, and then 112 to finish up the first round. We had Christian Watson. Then to start the second round, 201, Rich took Dem- Desmond Ritter. 202, Matt took George Pickens. 203, Garrett took Zamir White. Then I took Isaiah Spiller at 204. Rich took James Cook at 205. Then Matt took John Mechie at 206. So tell him, Rich. 
Yeah, it's it's pretty good. Uh, it's a pretty good recap here. I'm looking at. I actually have. I'm looking. I'm in my stat live. Uh, high stakes league draft uh, is going on right now. I, just, I was peeking at that real quick. So <laughs> if anybody's interested in how a high stakes rookie draft went through, it went through pick one eight. This is non super flex one QB high stakes. So it's a five hundred dollar entry fee league. Just to get, this is let my listeners know. Big it went, this is a real draft so far. Brees Hall, Kenneth Walker, Drake London. Traylon Burks, Garrett Wilson, Jameson Williams, James Cook, Sky Moore. Wow. Just this is one QB. It's right? a real draft going on as we speak. One QB okay. PPR. That's mm-hmm. early for James high Cooks. Stakes, so that's it. Yeah, real high. But hey, you know, got that money on the line. Got to get that action. So let's get into this nerd episode, shall we? Sounds good, man. Adios.